our oceans. Vast, mysterious, and essential to all life on Earth. This year is the third warmest on record since record keeping began in 1880. And there's a 50% chance it will move into the number one position for hottest year on record by the year's end. With the recent heat wave and record setting temperatures, Nick and I have seen firsthand the effects of our warming oceans, and it's heartbreaking. We recently met up with a very inspiring scientist named Dr. David Vaughn, whose accidental discovery has given us hope for our ocean's future. And our goal in today's episode is to educate and inspire you to also help save our oceans. So we invite you to join us in today's adventure with Dr. David Vaughn to help save the coral reefs. Stay tuned to find out more. Beneath the vast skies in the deep unknown, secrets are kept where mysteries have grown. Waves, once gentle, now bear a heavy sigh as warming waters make ecosystems cry. Uh, we're the Plan a Million Corals Foundation. We were started in 2019 by Dr. David Vaughn, who was the scientist that discovered microfragmentation, which is now used around the world for active coral restoration. It's hot. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, how's how are you? Yeah, we're just talking Thank to you. Again. Most of our viewers probably don't even know what a coral is. I mean, you go out snorkeling, you see these cool things in the water, but what is it? Yeah, in fact, a lot of people always ask, um, uh, don't we know everything we need to know about corals? And I ask them, well, can you tell me what a coral is? And they go, well, I'm not sure. Is it a plant? Is it an animal? Is it a microbe? Is it a living rock? Right. And I say, yes, 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 yes. It's all four of those things in one. It's an incredibly uh, cool and interesting organism that depends on all three of different phyla, different kingdoms working together. It's an animal polyp that has an plant algae that lives inside it that gives us its color and it grows a beneficial bacteria on its outside surface just like our gut does that it actually helps to become an immune system for the coral yeah. and yet it takes calcium and carbonate out of the water and makes calcium carbonate a permanent skeleton uh, forever and so we have a lot of uh, things that it's beneficial for you know it basically is a big habitat out there it's responsible for 25 to 40 percent of our world's fisheries it's less than one percent of the bottom of the ocean but it's a habitat where all organisms go to feed to breed and raise their young and it's the first line of prevention from storms and hurricanes so it's very important it's a five billion dollar a year industry in south florida wow, just uh, south for florida. tourism and so we need to protect it and climate change has had a big effect on things like polar bears, but it's also had a big effect on coral. Right, we saw that firsthand snorkeling a few weeks ago, yes, because it was very, very bleached. The coral footage shown here is from only a few weeks prior to the footage you're seeing now. Both sets of video were taken at the same reef, but you'll notice most of the corals have lost their color making them look white and dead, which is what we're referring to when we refer to coral bleaching. The coral's bright hues begin to fade as hot currents cast a somber shade. Majestic creatures from the depths arise, seeking cooler havens under distant skies. We'll let our favorite boat captain Captain Katie, give you a little more info about this particular reef. 
Kennedy is a, a large special protected area um, in the Florida Keys reef track called the Straits of Florida. The third largest barrier reef in all the land. At that latitude, the reef line is like south of Miami, Key Biscayne, all the way around the Florida Keys, passing by Tortugas. Certain areas they set aside as special protected areas. Blue Key is one of them. So there's no touching, no taking, no anchoring. Just looking at it. The reef does get extremely shallow. Do not stand on it. Coral is alive. It's not a rock. It's trying to survive in the cruel world. We just planted 500 new coral plants, maybe six, 700 new coral plants, and they're all bleached out right now. So, uh, the water temperature is extremely warm. So if you see white coral, that's just reaching recently in the past week bleached. Yet in this sadness, a glimmering light. Dr. Vaughn's new method, a beacon of might. A new process is born from a brilliant mind to mend the wounds and to reverse the bind. Could you tell us a little bit about your Eureka moment, your discovery? Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> my background is actually doing aquaculture of clams and oysters and fish and shrimp. And for all of those things, we usually have a hatchery and then a nursery on land and then a nursery in the field mm -hmm. and then a final grow out. But people doing corals first started with only one species which is the fast growing staghorn coral in a field nursery only by breaking it into pieces. It's one of the corals that has evolved to be able to in small storms, break pieces off. And if it lands in the mud, nothing happens. But if it lands on hard rock or, or, or a reef, it will grow itself back. And so people learned that that one species was able to do that. And they were able to just break it in the field. And I said, well, what about the other 28 species of right. coral? Right. And so um, they said, well, we don't know how they grow. We didn't even know that corals had a sexual reproduction cycle until 1980s, which is amazing. Yes. So one day after the full moon in August, after two days after the full moon in August, mm -hmm. after two hours after sunset, after the <laughs> full moon in August, they release eggs and sperm, mm -hmm. and only one in a million makes it wow. maybe every 100 years. Wow. But if they live to be 800 years old, they'll have eight offspring. Uh, no one was able to actually settle the coral successfully. We tried with Elkhorn and got a dozen to make it. Mm -hmm. But at one year old, I had to show you what they look like under a microscope. Oh, wow. At two years old, the size of a small coin, and three years old, just to a yes, large Yes, long time. Mm -hmm. So I got um, basically disinterested that it was too slow. I put them on the bottom of the glass aquarium, and I went to move them a few weeks later, and I didn't realize they had also grown to the bottom of the aquarium. And when I pulled it, it broke into pieces, and I thought I killed the first test tube baby coral, <laughs> but instead it grew many times faster. So like a good scientist, I took a scalpel and did it again. Right. Spent the next few years trying it, and it works with Recreate. every species. It stimulates them in small pieces to grow many times faster. Right. So it's a game changer. The New York Times called it my eureka mistake. <laughs> the technique is now called microfragmentation. Right. And it's a, it's a term I called back 20 years ago um, because people were taking for the aquarium trade big fragments and uh, this was microfragments. Yeah. So they started out like little plugs like that. Uh -huh. We put multiple plugs on that substrate and then they fused together, recognized that they were the same genotype, exact same DNA, mm -hmm. and grew back together. Yeah, and you can't even really see where they Yeah, it's were. crazy. Like, like very you can't even, exactly, yeah. yeah. Forget the sorrow, there's a call to mend, to shield our reefs, to tend and defend. Awareness blooms like anemones and tide, a chance to restore what's been cast aside. Hope blooms like seaweed on the ocean floor as his innovation comes knocking on nature's door. With dedication, hearts, and hands align to heal the earth, one solution to find. If we weren't able to restore the corals and they were all to die out, how long do you think the human race as we know it could exist still? Because they bring a lot of oxygen to the earth, right? They bring a lot of food sources. They do a lot of things for us. They do. They're, they're the canary in the coal mine. Probably life on our planet wouldn't stop immediately, 
but things would change in a cascading drastically section. yes mm -hmm. because what happens with the ocean eventually says what happens on land right do you think it would bring about another mass extinction or do you think that would take a little something a little more extreme i think it could i think it could um, however i think there's also the possibility that if we wake up fast enough that we could turn this around. And people are starting to wake up with this year's heat spell. Yes. Hoping yeah. that corals, even though they're one of the first line in the, you know, conditions are changing as really affecting them dramatically and drastically, that maybe they will be the thing that calls out the planet to change our behavior drastically. Right. And we can do that. Everybody that thinks that we can't solve this is not realizing how it works on this planet. Every individual can change their behavior and therefore change this planet. The only reason that uh, people are drilling for oil to burn is we're buying it. And if we stop mm -hmm. buying it and have a hybrid car, an electric right, car, a way. solar panel, yeah. this entire operation is totally run yeah. on the sun. That's amazing. It's whole, only off grid. Could you tell us a little bit about your Plant a Million Corals Foundation and how people could help that aren't scientists or don't know anything about the reef? I think I like to tell people that uh, at the end chapter of my book, The Secret Life for Corals. I read that. It's a great book. I really, I really love how, how it flows easily for anybody to understand. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I think it was a scenario where I saw people losing hope because everything seems to be going downhill. But I think corals with this new technology can wake people up and show them that there is hope if we all change our habitat. Use things that are more sustainable. For instance, I had a pickup truck years ago that only got like 10 miles per gallon. Now I have a Chevy Volt, which I repower by solar panels so that nice. I'm not burning <laughs> any. There you go, fuel. great. You uh, turn your lights out, go a more efficient air conditioner, more efficient a uh, refrigerator, a uh, walk instead of drive. Right, save, save a little wonderful. water, right? A lot of our viewers actually boondock a lot, so they're off grid. So they do have the solar and they have minimal water. I know we do, we've lived in a truck camper for three years. If we can actually power pumps and, and filters and everything else on the solar panels uh, and have enough to make it through the night, uh, people could do that in their houses too. Yes. Baby steps are good too. Uh, for instance, eat further down the food chain. It's a, it's a great one. I like that one. And, and save water as much as you are saving other resources. And uh, literally, I suggest people find a nonprofit foundation of your choice mm -hmm. and support it. And maybe get involved, not just for financial support, but volunteer and have a good time changing this planet because mm -hmm. there is hope. Right. And we were hoping we could actually volunteer here at some point. Sign up. There's a sign <laughs> There's up. There's a sign up. Awesome. 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 We'll be in there. Okay. Awesome. Let's weave a tapestry of conscious deeds, nurturing reefs like invaluable seeds. Through science, care, and global might, coral's colors can once again be bright. With time, dedication, and allied hands, we can rewrite the fate of these precious sands. The coral's vibrance need not forever wane, a story of revival, a resilient refrain. Let's rally around the cause, unite and strive to keep our corals and oceans alive. For though sadness tugs upon our souls, Dr. Vaughn's vision can help make the planet whole. So a lot of people think when I say plant a million corals that it must take a hundred years to grow a coral. And then they look at me being retired and gray and think that I look like I'm already a hundred years old. How am I gonna grow a million corals? Well, we started six months ago, uh, a little over six months ago here with just a, a couple hundred corals. And today we are cutting our 10,000th coral. Well, we're going to start the celebration. I first want to thank everybody for coming. Ryan Lomberg, if anybody's hockey fans. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is the 10,000th coral being So he's just pushing slowly, and he's now, as we call it, making coral copies. Woohoo! Yeah. Go! 
and uh, we're not going to plant any, which is different because everybody grows 10,000 and then they'll plant 9,000 and cut the 1,000 into 10 pieces and next year they'll plant another 9,000. So we're going to do the powers of 10 until we get to a million before we plant our first coral. There you go. So six months from now, we'll be cutting our 100,000th coral. Okay. And then we're not going to plant any. Okay. And in six months from then, we'll have more greenhouses and tanks here. We're going to cut each of them into 11 pieces instead of 10. There you go. And by the middle of 2024, that's just next year, we will hit 1.1 million. Wow. We'll keep the point one, cut it, and plant the million every single year. There you go. That's awesome. So when you cut them, are they just down to one polyp at that point, or is it several? Some species, as little as one polyp, but most of them, like you saw here just in the, the nursery, little, a couple. it's the size of maybe from a, as small as a couple heads of a pin to maybe like a pea or a pencil eraser. Okay. But then that grows up to a golf ball size in just six months, so we can get at least 10 or 20 right. or more pieces. From right, that. and yeah. you use this little saw And we use here. a specialized saw that's okay. meant for making coral jewelry. And so as I like to tell people, these things are made like small rocks. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it actually is rocket science. <laughs> it's rocket science. <laughs> so you're a rocket scientist. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> and so, but the technique is, is easy enough that volunteers can come and, right. and be right. helping us make corals in the same day they start. That's awesome. We actually yeah. own the website for Plantabillion Corals. You've already yeah. got it. You're ready. He's set. Exactly. He's determined. Right. He's going to do it. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll be excited to see you do that. Um, and hopefully we'll be helping out at that point. Yeah, so come down and help us do that. <laughs> Plantamillioncorals.org is our website. Right. And as I like to tell people, it's not only our mission, it's not only our vision, it's our recipe. We hope to get to one million corals one year from today. Good. Great. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you and we appreciate what you're doing. My right. pleasure. <laughs> Awaken warriors of land and sea, a cry for help, a desperate plea. Oceans and corals, once vibrant and bright, now face a darkness, a fading light. Rising tides of change we must defy before the last colors of corals die. Let's mend the wounds and heal the scars, protecting the oceans beneath our stars. Time is short, there's a battle at hand. To save our seas, we must take a stand. For in their survival, the planet she thrives. With courage and action, our hopes will survive. Seize the call. Let our plans take flight, a future with oceans glimmering bright. Together we forge a path to secure, a world where ocean's beauty endures. If you'd like to help plant a million corals, we put their info in the description below. Or feel free to reach out to us and we'll put you in touch. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode. And we'll see you next Tuesday on another adventure.